Hey everyone, welcome to my stream. This is Sarah. I am doing an eye study today in drawing. So I've got my supplies here that I want to talk about. Um, first, I do want to talk a little bit about a study. I talked about this last week when we were doing the flowers. It's really important for you to understand the... Um, the, the correct shape for things. So in our mind, we see an eye and what shape do we see? We see like this kind of almond shape, right? But that's not the shape of the eye. Our eyes are spheres. They are balls in our head, right? So it's important that you realize the shape that you see is like fat and eyelids and things like that that are covering the eye that give it the shape that we see. That is not the shape that it is, meaning that when you draw it, you have to draw it as a sphere. So we're gonna be studying that today. We're gonna to study the correct shapes. Um, the more you get out there and look at um, eyes, in this case, or trees or flowers or whatever it is that you're drawing, human figures, you know, the more you look at them, and draw them exactly how you see them, the better you're going to get at being able to uh, draw the correct shapes without having to do a study. But it is important to do studies when you are first learning to draw, so we are going to do a study of the eye. Okay, all you really need is a number two pencil and a piece of paper. That's pretty much it for being able to um, do my drawing class. However, if you want to get fancy, and sometimes we do, today we are going to be using different um, levels of the B pencils, 2B, 4B, 6B. You can actually just press harder with the 2B pencil, but it is nice to not have to apply any different pressure. So if you have a pencil set, um, it doesn't have to be quite this fancy as the set that I have, but um, that's always nice. The If you are using a number two pencil, I highly recommend you get a piece of cardboard or something to place underneath the paper that you're going to be using because um, the harder you press, it will go through to the next paper, especially if you're using a drawing pad. Okay, so number two pencil and paper is all you really need. But should you be so inclined, I also have this lovely pencil set, Giaconda. It's by Koei Noor, which is the brand. And inside my lovely box, I've got uh, pencils and stick versions of those pencils. So the pencils, I've got my sepia tones, those are the browns. Um, I've got graphite, which is what we'll be using today, and then I have lead and charcoal, which we will not be using today. There's also this smudge stick. Um, these are extremely handy. It is basically just uh, tightly wrapped newsprint, but it helps you um, blend everything. Uh, sometimes it's also called a blending stump. So uh, I don't, I don't know if I really like that term as much, but either, sometimes I'll use it. But anyway, the, our blending tool uh, is probably how I'll refer to it the most, but it is in the shape of a pencil. So you can get really nice lines. Uh, I mean, you can get really nice shading, like in corners and things like that, because it's shaped with that point. Um, okay. These are fantastic. If you don't have one of these, you can use your finger or you can use a piece of crumpled up paper that you uh, to smear. This is just to help blend everything together. I also, inside this box, have a kneaded eraser, which is fantastic because you can get nice little points like this. Or you can also use, and I like these, especially for erasing large parts, like when I draw frames uh, and then don't need those frames later, which we will be doing today. Um, these erasers are great. So this is a, an extra soft eraser. This is a medium eraser. They're both rubber. Pencil sharpener. This is a uh, makeup pencil sharpener, which you can get from Sally's. Um, 
actually even Dollar Tree might have these, but the makeup pencil sharpener is important because usually they're made out of metal and they're sturdier because they're made to be used with wax pencils. So these are really great and not very expensive. And then there's Rexy here. Rexy is my little T-Rex buddy. I love him. Anyway, he's just going to be watching, but I just wanted you to meet him. So he's going to watch over here. All right. Let's clear some room. Let's make some room here. First, we're going to start off with our 2B pencil. So let me just move this up. 2B, 2B, right here. Okay. So my 4B and 6B are ready. You can, again, reminder, Rexy's going to keep, keep watch over my number two pencil there. Uh, if you want to use a ruler for that, this part, that is perfectly okay. Um, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to make it easier for you to draw a circle because we're going to be do a, doing a rather large eye so that we can really study the shape of it. So first we're going to make a mark like right about the middle of our paper. So right there. Then I'm going to be doing, let's see. I'm going to be doing a, uh, a cross section. We'll just do four by four. So that's four inches. By let's see if I can get this right. Four inches. Okay. Now, if you want to draw a box around the outside of this to make it easier, you can. I'm not going to do that. That's extra steps, not necessary. So now you can draw, well, I will, let's do one corner at least of the box because I do want to show you. If you were to draw your line, so I'm going to hold this up so you can see because it's pretty light there. So you've got this box here. You're going to start at one corner. You're going to move to the other corner going along the edges and curving, but then curving in like that. All right. I can do this without the box. So I'm going to do that. Your circle does not have to be perfect. The idea is mostly that you have a circle. And in fact, that's the corner that doesn't even look the best. Use my big eraser. I'm going to erase that guide. Actually, I'm just going to erase this whole line because I, I like doing it without the box. To me, the box like throws me off a little bit. <sighs> Always remember, blow, don't wipe, because when you wipe your pencil, uh, I mean your eraser shavings, um, they can smear your drawing. There you go. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're, we're just trying to get general. Generally a circular shape to the, get the idea that we're doing a sphere. Okay. Next we are going to do, we're going to go in about, let's see, a third. So let's say that a third is maybe like there, like so there's one third, two thirds, three thirds. And we're going to draw another little circle. This one you can just freehand, which means we're not doing the guides. This is going to be our iris. That's the center of the eye. That's the, the colored part in the middle of your eye. Then about half the size of that is the pupil. So we're just going to do a smaller circle. Now, what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to very gently erase the outside circle. I want to be able to see it, but I don't want it to be very heavy. So I'm going to gently erase that line. Now the guides, you can go ahead and erase those. Those we do not need to see. Blow, don't wipe. I know this is gonna become like some kind of weird catchphrase for my, my channel. Blow, don't wipe. I just know it. I say it a lot. Okay, so I'm gonna hold this closer so you can see that yes, you can still see my circle, my big circle. Hello, Nopster. Welcome to the stream. We are just now getting our circles down to do our eye. So what we did, I'm quiet. Okay, let's see. Can you hear me any better? I'll have to see. No? All right. Well, uh, hmm. Let's see. Well, so I've got my, let's see. Hang on. I've got my mic plugged into a different USB, and that shouldn't matter, but maybe it does. Laura DuPont Health, you said you can hear? Okay. So it's possible that maybe with Nopster, maybe that's something. Um, I've got the mic pointed a little bit more toward me. So maybe, maybe something that's something on your end. So, okay. We're good. Good to know. So back... Back to the stream. Thank you for everybody for the troubleshooting. Appreciate that. Okay. So what we've done, I'm going to hold this closer so you can see. What we've done is we've drawn a very large circle that's going to represent the sphere of our eye because we're studying the shape of the eye. This middle circle is going to be, uh, or the second circle rather, is our iris and then the smaller circle Okay, thank you, Trudy Ann. The smaller circle is going to be the uh, pupil. Okay. So now we are going to take a look at what's called the pal uh, palpebral slant. slant. Okay, so palpebral is basically the eyelids, right? And it creates a slant. Like if you look at my eyes, um, they actually slant down a little bit, right? Some eyes slant up a little bit. So everybody's got a different slant to the way their eye is shaped. This person that we are going to be doing the eye of is going to have about a 10 degree slant up going from the inner corner to the outer corner. So what we're going to do is starting right here at the um, the the line. You can see the line after we've erased it. That that cross line that we did. We're gonna go up at about a ten degree angle. So I'll hold that up so you can see. 
and this is what gives our eye the shape. Now, of course, that's not the shape of the eye. So we're, this isn't, you know, we're going to have more curve to that. Actually, that's not even 10 degrees. Let's see. Let's maybe, well, that's okay. Uh, all right. So our upper lid is going to curve up. right above where the iris is. It's actually, you know what, let's actually, hold on. I'm going to go down a little bit further. So then it's going to come down to there. Now the bottom lid actually comes in a little bit. So it, it comes in a little bit at a slant and then it's going to curve down. Again, right below that the um, iris. Okay. So as you can see, there's a slight, I'm going to erase this guideline that we had, but there's a slight slant down. That's the parable slant. Okay. I'm actually wanting this side to come down just a little bit more. So I'm going to draw that. So almost maybe a 45 degree angle. I'm just looking at this and seeing. Now we're going to have a fat deposit up at the top. And it's going to follow pretty much the shape of the eye. That's this area right above here. And it kind of ends right where the eye circle is. Now we have another fat deposit down here. Okay, so that's that gives us kind of our general outside eye shape. The, on the inside of the eye, you've got something that's called a lacrimal caruncle, 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 it's lacrimal caruncle. And that's the little bit of, it's like a kind of a fatty deposit that covers like your sweat glands. So um, you've got this little, little tiny fat deposit right there in the corner. Then you also have a, a part a little bit farther out that follows the curve of the eye. All right. So what we're going to do now, um, I just want to get a couple of shapes drawn on the inside of the eye just because we're going to be adding um, some shading. So I want to make sure we don't shade over parts that we want. So you know when you look at the when you look at an eye 
you always see like that little glint, right? You know, especially you see it very clearly in like anime characters because th that's, it's exaggerated. That glint is what makes us look alive. And what, what that is, is the cornea, which is like a little, uh, it, it's like that little semicircle shape outside of your, on the outside of your eye it protects it. It's liquid filled. So what happens is as light goes to hit the iris, it is reflected through the cornea back up. So when you're seeing a light on the top part, it actually is light that's been reflected in the bottom part. It goes, it's reflected out the opposite side. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a little wedge, like a little piece of pizza here, a little triangle, upside down triangle, right in the corner of the eye. And I'm going to erase, I'm gonna use my kneaded eraser to erase out of this little area. And this is going to represent that reflection on the cornea, or through the cornea rather. So just to hold that up, so, so you see that little triangular shape there, that is going to represent the glint of light. Then we are going to take, I'm gonna take my 4B pencil. Uh, let's see, actually let me do 6B, because this is pretty dark. I'm gonna use my 6B pencil and I'm going to fill in that center. Now the reason I'm using 6B, you can also use your number two pencil. You're just gonna press down a little bit harder or you're just gonna shade more times. The reason I'm using this is because that way I don't have to press harder, it's a bolder. The B stands for bold, 6B, so the higher the number, the more bold. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to, uh, on the bottom lid, we have what's called the water line. And that is a little area, um, it's where you basically can see a ridge. Like, you know, it, it's a flat area where it goes up, you know, your eyelid goes up and then in towards your eye, that's the water line. Um, so I actually have eyeshadow on my waterline today so it looks darker but normally you would be able to see that as like a little fleshy it's usually kind of a pinkish fleshy um, color so what we're gonna do is we are going to just draw like a slight line right above the other line that we did and it is going to get narrow as it gets towards the uh, end there where it goes into the uh, caruncle. Okay. That's pretty much it for the waterline. Um, let's see. It may get a little wider here. All right, so now what we're going to do is um, we are going to, I'm going to go ahead and um, use a little bit of hatching to kind of draw in some shading for the eye. So first and foremost, I'm gonna be using three my three pencils, the 6B, 4B, and 2B. 6B is my darkest area, 4B, medium, and to be the lightest areas. Um, so we're gonna think about where the, the eyes are the darkest. So the darkest shading is going to be inside the crease, if you have a crease. Not all eyes have, well, all eyes have the crease because it's going around the eyeball, but um, not all eyes have a, um, like a really defined crease. 
So we're, I'm going to give this one a defined crease. So I'm taking my 6B pencil yep, and I'm going right in the, the crease and just doing a dark line. And I'm going to do a little bit of hashing. Hashing is just when you draw lines crisscrossing each other. So I'm going to do some right here, right on the inside where there would be shadow because it's going in. Uh, let's see, there'll be some over here because it's going away. And a note to any of you guys out there that are interested in makeup Applying makeup is basically just accenting the highlights and shadows of whatever, your face, your eye, your you know, lips, whatever, whatever part you're doing. So if you pay attention to where the shadows are on your eyes, those are the parts you want to make a little darker. If you pay attention to where the highlights are on your eyes, those are the parts that you want to maybe lighten up and put a lighter color on. So there's your makeup tip if you wanted it. Uh, okay, so I'm going to use... I'm pretty much done let's see there'll be a little bit on the inside of the eye and remember this is uh, our eye is rounded so we want to shade as if we're doing a sphere so I'm, I'm shading like kind of the corner there there'll be a little bit of shading over here And of course the caruncle has some shading on it. I'm rounding this out over here in the corner since I'm here. All right. I'm going to move to the, let's see, uh, wait, hold on. There we go. I'm going to move to the 2B, uh, 4B pencil, excuse me, and go in just a little bit more where it's not quite as dark, like around the outside where the fat deposit. So where this fat deposit is, if you look at my eye, I'm going to pinch it so you can see it. So right here, that is the fat, that's a deposit of fat. It's kind of got a teardrop shape a little bit. Um, and the teardrop shape goes out. So it starts thin here and goes out. So it's like fat on this side and then a teardrop, uh, the point is towards the middle. So if you think about, like I'm looking at the, um, like the shadow, the shadow is going to be a little bit teardrop shape. Hopefully that made sense. You also have a little bit of fat right here. It's, it's a smaller amount, but you do have it. You'll notice if I do a study on lips, you'll see that there's a lot of teardrop shapes in your face. Um, there's just I don't know why, but that's a shape that you see kind of repeated throughout the, the face. Okay, so now I'm going to take my 4B and I'm going to highlight just the outside of the eye. Because this is where our lashes are going to be so it, it is slightly darker I'm going to do the same
All right, so what I'm going to do now, let's see, we have some shading on the actual eyelid itself. All right, so now we're gonna take our spreader. Remember I was talking about that earlier. You can use your finger. You can use a piece of paper that you crumple up if you have to. And we're just going to go over those areas that we shaded. The good news is that this is going to be a relatively short class today because it's the only it's a study of only one thing. Last week we were studying the um, flowers, and we did five flowers, so it took a little longer. All right, um, I just realized I didn't do any shading down here. So I'm gonna use my 2B pencil and I'm gonna come in, the lightest one, so use the lightest pressure. And I'm coming in right under and right at the bottom. It's a little bit of a bowl shaped. And sometimes I like to just take my finger anyway and just smudge in the areas that are white because we don't have any parts of our face that are just like pure any anything unless you've got light shining directly on it. So that way it's not so stark. You know, we've got like a little bit of... Um, let's see. This fat deposit up here... I actually want it to be a little lighter than the 4B pencil, so could, because it does have an area that bulges out that catches more light. So I'm gonna I'm taking my eraser to it and I'm just dabbing at it, and then I'm gonna go in and blend. this side has a little bit too. I just went a little dark. That's it. I just went a little dark. I just recently found out, I don't know, I don't know how many of you are familiar with something called the Myers-Briggs or 16 personality factor. Um, that there, I am what's called an INTJ, or the architect. And I just found out very cool that apparently a lot of fictional villains are modeled after the IT, INTJ. So feeling pretty excited about that, that my personality is uh, ideal for a fictional villain. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> I feel like that needed to happen. Okay. Oh, picking up my number two pencil. All right, so we've blended everything. Now we need to come in and we need to do the eyelashes and uh, eyebrows. So I'm gonna use my 6B pencil for this. So first we're gonna do the eyelashes. Um, 
Eyelashes are going to follow the shape of the eye. So they're going to start by going out, out here, and then gradually start going up as they, they follow the shape of the eye. So we're going to start with a swoop out like that. And we're going to do another one pretty close to it. And we're just going to come in, I'm trying to do it so you guys can see but it's following the shape of the eye. And my pencil's not sharp, so it's... Now the eyelashes are longer on the outside than they are on the inside. So as you get closer, you're going to start uh, getting a little bit smaller. To maybe like right above the lid line. And they kind of cross each other. Like, so you're going to have some that are going different directions. I, I didn't think about that as I was going across. So all mine are like really straight, stick straight. So you might have some that are going different directions. So getting shorter. And get a little bit farther apart too. All right, so that's part of it. Oh, uh, sorry, I am using the 6B pencil. Thank you, Teacher Margo. I'm using the darkest one. Uh, if you are using a, two, a number two pencil, just you're just gonna have to press down a little bit harder. Now, your, eyelid, your eyelashes ju don't just go straight up. They actually kind of curve out. So what we're gonna do is at the bottom of these, we're going to create like a little uh, kind of a U-shaped, a, a low U-shape, going back towards the eye. So just a little U-shape. Now your U-shape is going to start to kind of go the other direction, although it's hard to tell because it's still a U-shape, but I just start drawing the other way where I start on the left side and go to the right versus go from the right to the left. Like that. And depending on how thick you want the eyelashes, you could do another layer that shows that this person has thick eyelashes. I'm going to kind of leave it alone. I am going to use my spreader though and spread because I don't think I did that when I was doing the shading. Yeah, I don't think I used my spreader at all when I was doing the shading of the eye. So I'm coming in and catching that now. Let's see, this was kind of a darker area here. Remember, we're shading a circle, so circles get gradually lighter as they come towards the middle. I'm going to come in here and do some of my lashes a little bit darker because I'm not going to do hit all of them. I'm just going to do some of them because my pencil needs to be sharpened and I could sharpen it or I could just come in and just be a little bit more precise with my lines. So that's what I'm doing.
All right, that means I need to also come in and do the U underneath. That U, remember, is the the bottom of the eyelash is curving in. Remember, some of your eyelashes go different ways. They don't all go straight out. All right, our bottom lashes. So our bottom lashes are going to do the same thing. They're going to start going kind of away from the eye. And they're much shorter. And much more messy looking. And they go right to the center of that uh, water line that I was telling you about. Still using the 6B pencil. And again, they do also get more sparse and that means farther apart and uh, a little bit shorter as they go around to the point where like once they're over here like you hardly see them. Oh, I'm not sure why I put that away because we're going to be using this for the eyebrow too. So keep your 6B pencil out. Eyebrows next. Eyebrows next. All right. The eyebrow is going to arch right above where that shadow was. But it starts at the corner of the eye and arches up. Now, everybody's eyebrow is different. So mine my arch ends almost on the outside of my iris. The girl in our reference photo, her eyebrow ends farther out. So you can draw whatever eyebrow you want. If you wanted to, to, to come a lot of eyebrows, the arch ends right in the middle where the pupil is. Mine's a little bit farther out. This girl is a, even farther out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do mine like the picture. Her eyebrow ends past the iris so and it it arches up like that and then it starts to come down now your eyebrows the hairs themselves when you are right there at the corner of the eye actually grow up and as you go out, they start to actually grow out towards your temple. But they start growing straight up. So what we're going to do, we're going to do basically the equivalent of what I do when I line my brows. We're going to draw our hairs and then we're going to go in and we're going to spread it in a little bit so that it fills in rather than trying to draw our hairs really close together. We're actually going to do the same with the lashes. So it's almost like we're putting makeup on our girl, but we're not. We're just filling it in because this is what it looks like. So as, as we go out, our brows are going to start to curve. Now everybody can do, like I said, their, their own brow. She's got very manicured brows.
All right. Now, what we can do, because I'm looking at this and I'm thinking this, for some reason, is not looking very natural to me. So, um, these brows right here, we're going to make them manicured. We're going to come in with our eraser and just kind of erase a nice line that shapes her brows. Then we're going to come in with our spreader. And we're just going to spread everything in. Be cognizant of where your hand is because it's going across the eye so that you don't smear a bunch of your eye. Uh, let's go ahead too and, and we're just going to smear right at the bottom of our eyelashes. So I'm just doing like little kind of scoopy lines and that will just make them look a little fuller. All right, now we need to work on the center of the eye, right? Because it's clear. <laughs> so we're gonna start with our 2B pencil. Now, if you haven't done it already, I tried to do mine at the beginning, but make sure you've got that cornea reflected light. I'm erasing mine out, just the guideline, oops. I erased too much. Hold on. I got to fix. Let me get the 6B pencil. It's going to look a little bit like a Pac-Man. A waka 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 waka. All right. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw all of our lines that kind of radiate out. Our iris is what allows light into the eye. Like that's, that's what dictates how much light gets into the eye. So it's got all these like little filaments in it. And we're going to draw these very lightly. And they're following, they are following the circular shape. Because remember, again, this is a sphere. This is not a 2G object that we're... So they kind of curve slightly. I'm doing them kind of spread apart, but I'm going to do another set that's closer together. So pretend that your shape is still here and you're going to go around that shape. Okay, I'm doing another set. That's closer together. Maybe. I'm having trouble. My lines don't want to go where I'm telling them to go. Now we're going to take our 4B pencil or press harder if you're using your uh, number two pencil. And we're gonna come in and draw some lines but they're gonna be on the outside of our eye. So we're not coming all the way in
Still trying to, trying to follow the shape of the, the eye, like with that slight curve. Now we're gonna take our spreader and we're gonna spread around the outside of the eye and gradually blend in. Now it's important to note that after I did the eyelashes and the waterline and everything like that, that it covered up part of my eye. It is very rare to be able to see the entire um, iris. Now I, I, it's called something and I don't remember what it's called. Like when I raise, when I wide my eyes, you can see all of mine. This was told to me by one of my art teachers that apparently that's pretty rare. Um, that I guess most people, you only ever see the top or the bottom of their iris. Like you don't see the entire thing. So that's fun. Probably just, I just have giant eyes. So, you know, okay. So I'm coming in and doing this and then I'm going to start drawing that shade in a little bit. Don't forget about your little, uh, light shape there. So I'm drawing that in. So what you end up having is you end up having this lighter shade like in the center. Now I'm going to take my 6B pencil and up at the top, I'm going to have some, this is basically our shading. It's going to be dark up here. Don't forget to leave your little light area. So it's dark. And then we'll, we're going to do just a little bit of darkness down at the bottom. The darkness within. Mwahaha. I'm really excited about this villain thing, y'all. I feel like this is like something I should have known years ago. Okay, I accidentally went outside my lines. So I'm just going to take an eraser. Well, we can shade a little bit. So I'm going to shade. Villain. If I had to be any villain, like let's say Disney villains, for example. I like Ursula a lot, but I think I like Maleficent the best. I think she's my fave. She's pretty cool. My sister actually has been Maleficent for Halloween and she does an epic Maleficent. She's, she is, um, my sister's very good at costumes, but she's been Maleficent before. Okay. I'm going to shade a little bit up at the top of the eye, just with my spreader. And let's see, what else do we want to do? Is there, our eye is pretty much finished. Uh, but I feel like there's probably some areas where we could come in, maybe get a little bit of shadow, like around the, uh, water line, a little bit darker in the corner there, a little darker in the corner here in the caruncle. I just like saying that word, the caruncle. <laughs> it's a fun word. Uh, okay. So we have, I'm going to take my eraser 
and just very lightly dab right at the light part in the eye just right there so I'm not taking out the lines completely but a little bit let's see I'm just dabbing down in areas where you know you've got light bits in your eye where like the the iris isn't as dark let's see okay let's see we've got um, if you have the kneaded eraser we've got the lacrimal caruncle is just a little bit lighter right where the light hits the outside of that part that goes with the shape of the eye and let's see I can use my spreader to come in here and, and give it a little bit more shape This is pretty good, y'all. I think we're pretty done. Um, give just a couple little more eyelashes. Because you do technically have eyelashes that go all the way across. They're just very light um, and very short. So we can come in. We can make it darker if we want to, you know. I kind of want to make her eyelashes a little darker. So don't forget when you do the eyelashes that you have those little U's at the bottom that make them connect to the eye because they wrap under. So don't just draw your eyelashes. This is even if you were doing, um, say you were doing manga characters, you know, your your characters still are going to have a little bit of curve to their eyelash. You know, it's not going to just come straight out. I mean, it depends on on uh, how realistic your manga characters look. Manga? Manga? I don't know. I'm probably saying that wrong. I'm sure. Probably manga. Uh, okay. Let's see. I'm going to bring her eyelashes just a little bit over. Maybe give her a little bit darker. I'm using the 6B pencil, just so you know. A little bit darker here in the eyebrow area. So this goes to show you how the shape of her eyebrow. Let's talk about that for a second. Everybody has different, everybody has different shaped eyes. So depending on, think about the shapes that we talked about today. We've got, first of all, you've got the, the circular shape of the eye, right? But then you also have how thick the lashes are, the size and the darkness, you know, say she's got brown eyes. Well then her um, irises are gonna be darker, you know? Uh, let's see what else we've got the angle of the eye so we did ours at a slightly 10 degree angle up but my eyes angled down slightly um, some eyes some people's eyes angle very high up you know some people are a little bit more towards the middle um, so you've got all, all of these different uh, eye slants you've got the how much like the fat deposit on the eye and the crease and how deep the crease is how high up the crease is so you've got all these different things you know where the brow actually comes down um, you know mine comes down right at the edge of my iris whereas the woman in this reference photo hers comes down more towards the outer part of the eye so you know all of these things go to make somebody's eyes look different and you know there's always that kind of um, I guess maxim that eyes are the windows to the soul 
if you think about it, our eyes are so unique that it is really what makes us look like us. So um, when you're drawing someone's eye, like say you're drawing an actual person, you want to do a portrait of your friend or, you know, whatever, your daughter, something like that. Pay attention to the things like where their eyebrow comes down or, uh, you know, how much of a fat deposit they have up above and, and where their crease is and how deep their crease is and everything like that. Because those are the things that are going to make them look like them. So I am pretty much done. If anybody has any questions, I would love to hear it while we're still here. I'm going to do the critique of my eye. Um, but we will also, if you notice my Discord server right here, if you have been drawing along with me today, I would love for you to join the Discord server, which there should be a button at the bottom of my Twitch page um, that takes you directly there. That includes the, the um, invite link. So I would love for you to join that. Take a photo of the eye that you drew today and upload it. And what we're going to do is we are going to do a live critique. I bring up Discord on my um, stream and we take a look at the pictures that are out there. I will show you real quick what that's gonna look like. So here is the reference photo that I did, uh, that I uploaded. So that's the reference photo in my Discord. That's another reason to join. Even if you didn't do a photo today, when you join, you can see what reference photo I'm going to be using. All right. If anybody uploads theirs, that'd be fantastic. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and critique mine. Now, one thing I noticed right away is uh, the arch of my eyebrow starts a little farther than I actually had originally wanted it to. So I'm going to just bring that in a little bit just by smoothing that out. I really need to sharpen this because it's so remember in the eyebrow they the hairs once it reaches that arch start to go down. So taking a look at this if I compare it to the reference photo if I look at it and say does this look like an eye I would say I was successful. There are I don't think that there's really a whole lot else I could do to it that would make it look more eye-like. I think anybody who looked at this would say, oh, that looks like an eye. Um, however, if looking at the reference photo, there's a lot of shaded areas that I think I could go darker. Uh, for example, in her crease, and I probably could bring the crease down a little bit. So let's do a 6B pencil. It's like a little bit more of a, a defined uh, crease there. And I'll give her a little bit more shadow on her eye. So I can blend that in. Um, let's see. Other than that, I mean, it doesn't look exactly like the reference photo, but I think that's okay because I think that you know every eye is different so overall I would say I was successful I studied the eye one thing I would probably do differently if you think about it this to this actually follows the circle of the eye now it does go up farther in our uh, like so our brow line is actually the the ridge that comes over the top of the eye and it does go up into that a little bit so it does go up into here but I do think that I didn't follow my circle well enough like I think I could have followed the shape of my circle a little bit more um, other than that I think it was successful so 
I'm going to sign it, even though it's just a study, I think it's still important to sign. I'll just do it with my number two pencil here. Also, I'm kind of reminding myself because I always forget to tell you guys to sign your work. Okay, let's see if anybody has uploaded to Discord. No, I do not have any yet. So, Teacher Margo, were you able to do the I? I know sometimes you follow along with me. Uh, but I would like to definitely see if anybody was able to do it today. I'm thinking that maybe it's a no. So that's okay. Um, I don't mind. Again, if you do finish the eye or if you go back and rewatch, um, then I would love for you to upload it at a different point and I can still look at it and give you feedback. Um, other than that, we are done for today. Um, I did see one more little area. I just want to get a little bit more shadow in here. I don't know why. The shape of her eyes. I just want it to be a little bit more hooded. Like, like she's a villain. She's an INTJ as well. Um, okay, so this Friday I am so, so excited because we are going to, to continue the portraiture, the idea of portraiture, because I, I wanted to cover eyes. Um, at some point I will do a study on lips because lips are particularly hard to draw for a lot of people, especially a smile that shows the teeth. That's difficult to draw. Um, so the best thing to do is to kind of fudge it a little bit and I will show you how to do that. So um, I might do a study on the mouth coming up. Um, however, in the meantime, for the painting class this Friday, very excited. We are going to be doing uh, Vermeer's Girl with a Pearl Earring. So I don't know um, if you're familiar with that, but it's a very famous painting. And I have been wanting to do this lesson plan for quite a while, so I'm excited to be able to do that. So I look forward to seeing you on Friday at 6 p.m. Thank you very much for joining me today on this stream and have a wonderful week.